I would like to continue a little bit in English um, with um, uh, the words of opening again of the fourth international conference on aquaphotomics. Um, it is a pleasure to uh, be with all of you here in Japan, even though we have this very unpleasant corona situation already second year. But there is a will, there is a way. I believe in that, and most probably all of you too. We could not get our foreign friends to come to Japan for the fourth time to join us for this international conference. But we could do get together here at Kobe University in this beautiful hall to uh, commemorate this uh, fourth international conference because water connects all of us because all of us, we want to learn about water. We know that it's not an easy way, but um, again, if we want, it will be possible. And um, this presentation will be recorded. We have our uh, colleagues from two companies, um, Kotodama that does the translation Thank you very much to all of you. And uh, Mamoun Studio, thank you very much to all of you for doing all the Zoom work, which is, um, I didn't know how tough it could be. And, um, and I think I started with uh, um, my really, really heartful gratitude to um, all the members of my lab and um, Yunusato. SPA, Aquaphotomics Laboratory, and Unisato SPA itself, who helped us a lot organizing this event. It wasn't a simple thing, but I think we'll be very happy at the end. Um, this atmosphere, um, and I can hear the word fuinki, which is absolutely beautiful word in Japanese. Um, and um, I'm sure we can translate and transfer this fuinki to the whole world. Because of the water conference, of the aquaphotomics conference. To all my friends all over the world, I thank you for um, agreeing for me to continue in Japanese. So I'll do my lecture from now on in Japanese. Okay, so from here, we will continue in English. <laughs> it's a bit different from usual. Mainly it will be about aquaphotomics. <laughs> I cannot believe it myself. I am going to graduate today. I'm going to retire. This is going to be my last lecture. I would like to call it my farewell lecture, not my last. The Japanese law changed and luckily uh, after my retirement, I can still stay here and continue my research, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Isera. <laughs> yes, so um, thanks to Dr. Isera, I can continue my work here in the agricultural department here at this university. The fourth international conference, there was a first, second, and third, of course. 
This is the very first conference. This is the Aquaphotomics logo. This Aquaphotomics logo, the poster uh, re received a reward. Mr. or Ms. Eto designed this. It was held in Basel, uh, in one of the Kobe University offices at a national symposium. That was the very first time. And then Rokoho here, and then Awaji Island, that was two, three years ago. Uh, last year, we were planning to have another conference in at Awajishima. However, it did not happen, and I was hoping to postponing it. But yeah, the good news. <laughs> The third, there was some time between the third and fourth conference. Uh, we were able to hold a conference, a quantomics conference in Europe. Zoltan Kovacs um, made a laboratory and is now doing his research on aquaphotomics. And he organized the very first conference in 2019. We were able to hold a conference in China. Um, two groups took initiative at this conference. And it was a quite unique research. <laughs> and uh, some of the ideas were shared at the conference, at the workshops this morning. What I'm going to talk about today, my story becomes the aquaphotomics story, and it becomes, it changes into different kinds of story. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, Ms. Ozaki and Mr. Iwamoto, you will um, hear their presentations later. They are the pioneers of this field of the water research. <laughs> they are the pioneers, and now the new people are making sure that uh, it becomes into something fruitful that's going to benefit our society. Um, it was her idea to make this chart. Um, she did a presentation on um, aquatomics in, um, a couple of years ago, and then since then, she has been publishing a lot of, uh, she has been having lots of publications, uh, 1700, that's a big amount. Uh, that is what she is aiming for. Uh, aquatomics Laboratory now are not just here in Japan, but in America, in Europe, and New Zealand. So it's spreading all over the world. Yeah. And we'll see what's going to happen tomorrow and day after tomorrow. And thanks to that, um, aquaphotomics has been researched in a lot of fields, and there have been lots of publications in different kinds of pieces. Um, it's something really that I, I'm really thankful about. Uh, the, the omics in aquaphotomics. Aquaphotomics. <laughs> the discipline of... Uh, when you think of it as not one word, but it's like uh, water is a medium. Think about a, a bunch of flowers. So it's like everything put together 
uh, to make something happen. And, uh, and the water serves as a mirror. And um, mirrors some, reflect something uh, that we can see. Um, so in order to see the information in the water, we need light. It's the same as us humans. <laughs> when we are happy, so when we have light, we can see a lot of things. So here is aqua photoonomics. Water, light, and all about it. Then we, 60% or 70% of our body is, is composed by water. And the baby had a, uh, so a large volume of water inside their bodies since birth. Some moisture, con moisture content is very... And as, as we get old, the water content decreases. And what do you mean by anti-aging anti is that the water, or we, we try to maintain the water uh, that is very important in our human body. So these are uh, paintings drawn by uh, Higashiyama Kai. I wonder why, but I feel that uh, I, uh, I feel like working with these uh, paintings all the time. I love Japanese paintings, actually. What I love here is that... So this shows the reflection, as you can see on this slide. On the right-hand side is a very rare picture for him. So this is not 100% 100 half. The, the moon is... Uh, can be seen at the bottom of this picture. This picture, I believe, represents what aquaponics means. Invisible thing can be seen on the water, on the surface of pond in this case. And light is reflected. The moon is not illuminated by itself, but moon is uh, so illuminated thanks to the reflection of the sun. Although we can see the moon on the water, but however, this is not a real moon, but a reflection. And why we can see the moon on the mirror is that the visible light, this is because of visible light, because visible light is not observed into water. So visible light will be uh, reflected. This is why, thanks to this mechanism, we can see the moon on the water surface. And as I said, that uh, our human body has have 70% of water content inside us. And how we have lived so far in that. So, you know, Sato always said that words, why and why. Why? I think that they love the question starting from why. This is because I like the road and I like walking. There are lots of, there are different types of road. When we look at sun, when we look at dawn or... So it is very happy to see the sun arising from the horizon. We can feel peace by looking at that when it's dark and sometimes the light appears to light is appealing this is a kind of science and i love fog in some cases we cannot see anything it is very hard in that case when we have a question so sometimes once we start to work that we can see the road going forward. The story of aquaphomics is like the journey of answering questions. 
the journey on answering questions. So let's join this journey together. Please join this journey. As Professor Yasui introduced, so this is my university I graduated from. Bulgaria. I believe that you are familiar with uh, Dona liver. So I was born close to the Dona liver. And the, so electrical engineering, in particular automatic con control field, I was the first student at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering or the or maybe then after, soon, soon after I graduated from the university, I worked as an assistant teacher. And I believe that Bulgaria reminds you of yogurt. And yogurt. So they don't uh, so people in Bulgaria don't like soft yogurt, but uh, larger hot they love hot one. But in some cases yogurt isn't coagulated. And then I I did research about the harder yogurt by and uh, developing new instrumentation. But even though we have very splendid so devices, we cannot make yogurt without milk. Then, after studying hard, I happen to know about NIL in Russia, found in Russia. And thanks to a professor in Moscow, in Russia, in order to investigate the condition of milk, that professor advised me, why don't you use other devices of NIL? NIL? Let me skip some parts. Let me continue. So from yogurt, I went to Moscow to receive doctor, to study, uh, to get doctor doctorate. Then I studied automatic control as well. Then I studied at the University of Hokkaido in Japan. And I took postdoctoral course for one and a half years. But before that, I studied very hard at Japanese language intensive course. And Professor Kamiya uh, taught me a lot. And Mr. Ka Professor Kamiya was a professor, a teacher at the veterinary department of Hokkaido University. And I asked many questions to Professor Kamiya. This is because uh, there are many things I didn't know about. Uh, I didn't know about culture and they don't know about language and so on. But prof the Professor Kamiya asked, uh, answered all the questions posed by me. And sometimes he said that I have, so I didn't, uh, I don't think of that way. And uh, he was, ex he and she was, ex uh, were extremely hard, extremely kind. And thanks to them. And then when I uh, gave a lecture in Tokyo, thanks to the cooperation of sponsors, I could, I was able to meet them in Tokyo. I picked up these pictures on the uh, so on the slide. So these these trees can be also seen in Bulgaria, like in May. And the scent is really beautiful. 
And uh, I was at Hokkaido University in 1996. So this is Obihiro, Obihiro University. So I belong to livestock laboratory, also I was an engineer. But the professor at the uh, livestock department or laboratory used uh, some devices to diagnose mastitis. And then I spent there for one year. We took sample from cows early in the morning, and they did milking early in the morning. But at that time, there was no spectrometer. So we like to see the spectrum of NLI, NIR and other, other data. So I collected samples and took a plane to go to Tsukuba. And uh, once I arrived at a laboratory in Tsukuba, I uh, did research up until midnight. And the professor working there approached to me and say hello at that time. Are you studying about mathematics? And then a uh, water, it should be the water. The water would be the key for mastitis. However, I had no idea about that. And Professor Kawano on the right-hand side. At that time, so he advised me to collect the beautiful spectra. And after going back to Hokkaido University, I continued to study at the laboratory in the university. And actually, one of the characteristics of NIR spectrum is non-destructive. So even though uh, we try to target animals, uh, we can continue to collect data or spectrum from animals because the NIR, NIR is non-destructive. And you can see that so we can see the peaks of water. During milking, the milk fat is increasing, and which causes increase in light scattering. So, so light observed looks like increasing, and we can say that milk fat is increasing. At that time, omics, like today, we look at the molecules. <coughs> but so in order to see functionality, we have to study harder. At that time, as I was very proud of my devices to check, to investigate the components in milk and wrote a paper. That paper has been used as reference for other researchers, in particular in the field of agrophotomics. At that time, what, what was striking the most was that actually I had monitoring, I had I kept monitoring five cows and I when I try to collect the cow A, I go to collect A. So light, so observe light and scatter light. And the light coming back is different from each cause because of reflection, like the drawing on the uh, 
from by Higashiyama Kaii. And after going back to Hokkaido University, I did this kind of research and attended international conference such as NIR International Conference. And uh, professor, prominent professors kindly took me to the international conference. And the co professor Kawamura and the co professor Kafka from Hungary attended the same meeting, same international conference. The guru of NIR are Professor Ozaki and the professor in the United States and the president of Fantech in Japan. Although the, the company was bankrupt, and the device I still continue to use was developed by that company. And the book. So the book is like a Bible for me. Together with Professor Nori and also Professor William, I had a photo. In Hokkaido, I read a lot of papers and went to many conferences and do researches. There was a question. NIR can measure a lot of things, not just the materials, it can also measure energies and how much energy can be consumed by animals. That is also measured by NIR. That was uh, amazing things by having this system to be created. There are a lot of applications possible, for example, the analysis of feed, and the consumption of peas or digestion of peas and the soil and the other physical things can be measured. And I can be applicable for a lot of measurements. So then what is NIR? So NIR is invisible light next to visible light. And the Chinese character of light is in the shape, same shape, uh, reflection, absorption, and then transmission. So the shape of the kanji character or Chinese character is similar to how it behaves. It is light. If you see the Chinese character, how it behaves can be predicted. Electromagnetic, that we have the uh, UV, the visible light, infrared light, and ultraviolet and microwave and so on. There are many energy types in electromagnetic fields, but we have a spectroscopy. The spectroscopy is that to separate it it by energy. This is the spectrum. 100% light comes in some material, but only a partial one come out. So it reflects the uh, energy. So the remainder is showing its spectra. And what is the water spectra? This red line. When I saw it, I was surprised. The water can absorb all the energies in the whole spectra of electromagnetic field. But the visible light is to be reflected, this yellow part. Only 300 nanometers in this area, light transmit to water. So only the small absorbance, but the rest is reflected. So you can see water, um, then you can see what is happening. Unlike solar light, this orange one is a light reaching the earth. There is a gap that means that light was absorbed. 
So in between of the uh, sun and the earth, light is absorbed because of CO2 or water or oxygen. If you look at these two, this spectral and this spectral, uh, when there is less water absorbance, then more light comes in. So it's a, it is a mechanism of nature, I think. And we have an instrument. This morning, Yelena talked about instruments. There are various types of spectral photometers. And this is a one developed by a Japanese company, the short wavelengths monitoring one. Non-destructively, a diagnosis can be made by using this machine, like a prion disease. Light can be used for diagnosis. Why? Then and the answer has reached aquaphotomics invention. We did the cow monitoring, we used NIR, and we can measure a lot of things. Why we can measure it and how we can get this result. So this led to our project. In the past, uh, methane gas was a big challenge we had. And the Animal Welfare Institute and the Hokkaido University and other teams, in total five teams, uh, worked together. Animal Husbandry Institution and Food Institution and Hokkaido University and Kobe University and Kawansei Gakuin University. These five institutions worked together. This project started in 1996. At that time, I came to Kobe University as associate professor. I joined Toyota, Professor, professor Toyota's laboratory. And it was a process engineering department or laboratory. And in 2006, uh, uh, became the professor. Uh, back then, we had a workshop in our laboratory, and also we had a Professor Komuro and also the J.D. Powa. This is a person who is the chairman of the Water Conference. Because of that project, we had an entrance of the uh, aquaphotomics. It led to the current aquaphotomics. We looked at the cows and we checked their milk, urine, blood, and tissues. We had in vivo research using the pantic like uh, we had a spectra from the other, and then we had an immediate diagnosis of the mastitis. So I remember what happened back then. If you look at something, I think there are meanings of look and see. There is a difference between look and see. Even if you see it, sometimes you cannot look at it. If you look at the spectra, uh, what is the change that can be seen? So I was a student, but I always say that nanospectral needs to be looked at. If you see tens of thousands of spectra, you can understand it. So the quality or quantity is important. If you learn a lot, you can see then, and you can get the knowledge. So uh, we have this uh, disciplinary of NIR measuring a lot of things. So for example, we measure the lipids and lactose in milk. There are cows with mastitis or healthy cows. And if you look at the spectral, uh, we have the similar uh, spectral. 
for the lactose and so on, but for protein, there is so much difference in the spectra between the diseased cows and the healthy cows. So protein spectra show the difference. Then, and I can measure a lot of things. Then look at the, the cells, dead cells in milk in diseased um, animal. The animal with mastitis had some dead cells in milk. The dead cells in milk uh, cannot produce, uh, it's not good. So, and also there is an enzyme, casein, and there is a dissolution, and yogurt cannot be coagulated with uh, that state, and cheese cannot be produced. Then, can we count those dead cells? At the first, we couldn't do that. There are some individual differences, so we need to have a model for individual cows, and then the data is getting better. And we noticed that there is a difference between the healthy cows and the mastitis cows. Sick cow model is shown here, and the, the other one is a healthy cow model. This big peak is water. This big part shows the difference. That is a turning point. A healthy cow and sick cow. What is the difference? It is water. Water is different. So this was noticed thanks to that project. Taking this opportunity, I would like to extend my thanks to that project because the grant is necessary if you want to do the research. And the next step, we can do the disease diagnosis. The next, what we can do? So it is about the research of body fluid. Mm. This may look weird. We take a blood plasma spectra. And then the milk components and you can see the correlation between the plasma and the milk. So even you look at the plasma, you can see the parameters of milk. This may be totally different, you may think, but actually if you look at the plasma, you can also assess the milk content. And the next uh, sample is the gastric juice. And then we see whether there is any correlation with milk or not. And we found the correlation between milk and gastric juice. Not, not everything, but some of them show the correlation. Gastric juice and blood, uh, so I think there is a correlation of lipids. But for the lactose, it is not related to gastric juice. For lactose, uh, it is related to plasma. Another experiment, we have the body samples like urine and blood. And can we use these samples for the diagnosis of mastitis? Milk would be the best sample we thought, but actually it's not. If you look at the other samples, you can get the diagnosis of mastitis. Milk or urine or blood, you can diagnose mastitis. So the information of the disease is everywhere. And with that project, 
Obihiro University, Hokkaido University, and Kobe University, we had a big project. When I joined Kobe University, I needed to talk in Japanese. I needed to do the big project. I wanted to do a lot of research. And I didn't understand the administrative matters and like and SOMU and so Kyomu in Japanese and so on. I didn't understand all of them, but I was able to manage all of that. Now I'm here standing in this podium. And that is thanks to everybody who has supported me. There are a lot of wonderful students, not just in Kobe University. All the excellent students, always they uh, did everything or do their best in managing the researches and initiatives. So water is related to a lot of things. And so we did some peculiar experiment. It was released in Korea. The difference of the spectra between healthy, cow, healthy animals and sick cows. And also Professor Norris look at this experiment. And the water goes through the cubit cell and the spectrometer, and the spectral are uh, taken one second and third time. We take it consecutively, and then we can see that for one, the, the spectrum is, is different. And so we can see the difference that one reacts more than the other. And then we also notice that every time we take it, it is different. So what is the difference? What causes the difference? Um, so that becomes a, a question and it becomes something that we want to find out what the relationship is. Um, so when we actually conducted this experiment, I still remember, like, however, so surprised to find out those things. Um, so, yeah, when he came, um, I was invited many times here in, in Kobe. And uh, I've done a lot of research together with Dr. Ozaki and um, spectroscopy. We've been uh, he has taught me the basics of spectroscopy. And I think without that, uh, I was never able to see all the things. Uh, the, the chemometrics is something, oh, it's, it's kind of rude to say, but chemistry and math is not a really good match. <laughs> yeah. But there's this software that helps to put these two different fields of study together. And thanks to that, we were able to see the, the relationship between the two fields of study. Um, it wasn't just the two, it wasn't just, the difference wasn't just the, between the two bands. Was, there were so many things involved. And we were able to see it as two big bands. But when you take a look at it, you can see that's a lot of, little different uh, various things are involved uh, that come out as differences. And then this happens. <laughs> uh, my family loves to go on a hike and we go hiking quite often. Well, not really mountain climbing, but just a hike. Yeah, <laughs> like the size of Mikage, Mount Mikage in the neighborhood here. Uh, so yes, I was talking with my husband about uh, aqua photoomics during the hike. And uh, yeah, 
So during those hikes, the talk between those during those hikes really helps me understand the study of it. Uh, this is my daughter. <laughs> uh, in two thousand, in year uh, two thousand, um, she studies uh, prion disease, um, and the the prion disease is actually in a protein, and it's actually rejects the stress protein. Um, so, yes, she's now doing her research in that field. So why uh, the prion disease and how is that related to protein? How does it affect it? Uh, so uh, the bronze goes into the the, 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 the blood and that actually causes the difference, different reactions. So if the cow is vaccinated, um, it can be prevented. Uh, that was actually found out by a British researcher. But yeah, so my daughter was actually doing research on the prion disease, and she was talking about the four different molecules, and she asked me, what can I do to measure these differences? So I suggested her to take the spectrum, um, the spectra um, of those four different things, and when we actually measured it, as you can see, all the spectra look totally different. So this is like, there's no, this, there's no, dis no diseases, there's one, and the other one is the diseased one, and then you can obviously see the, the big difference, the clear difference there. And how, yeah, how do you reach this, all this information? It took her four years to actually find out uh, what those results actually meant, so what they were trying to tell us. <laughs> and all this time, like, I was wondering how she was doing, and, um, yeah, so I was very happy when she was finally able to find out, uh, and that was her first research uh, paper. <laughs> and so that was also the, the, the paper that I understood the most. And, well, in the field of science, stimulation is something very important. So, as I said earlier, I have been blessed with all my gurus, my all my buddies, uh, Professor Ozaki, Alex Sensei, and of course all the water conferences. Well, it's the same water, but we look at water in different ways. And of course, there's a lot of things we cannot explain. And all the scientists, they don't criticize each other. I think it's very rude to, to, to criticize each other negatively, but if you don't know, it's always okay and important to ask. And I think that is the right way of trying to solve problems and doing research. Um, Harold Martins, Professor Harold Martins from Normis, he's one of the fathers. <laughs> of this field. Montagnier, Professor Luc Montagnier uh, has been doing the research on water the, the whole time, uh, Nobel Prize level. Um, and um, he came to the Unisato spa and couldn't to do the research there on water. Um, Martin Chaplin and Jacob Van Eschel 
uh, the microscopes in the water is something that he also uh, did his research on. Um, the spectra in the other system, we knew that there was a change there. And he did write a paper on that. And so, mastitis, he, we didn't know what was going on in the other tissue uh, when this disease occurred. But like the dessert, <laughs> um, Mr. Professor Kunio Yasue, and Okay, he wrote about aquaphotomics and about the water. Uh, it has been an honor for me to actually meet uh, Mr. Kunio Yese. Uh, we talked a lot about consciousness, how we should be aware of things. Um, we think it's uh, uh, something that we have to work on, on uh, for a lifetime. Um, so, so I did meet him at a, a conference, but um, um, the people at the conference will actually do a presentation tomorrow, but um, so, so consciousness or awareness uh, that have been talked about all comes from the research on water, um, by doing the research together. There were some things we were able to understand. So here is something about the prion disease in mice. Like it, this, it's just 30 grams. This mouse is only 30 grams. And uh, we've been studying for what, two years. We actually gave the mouse free on disease. We inserted it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you see that? That we measure this this spectra by putting that camera by the stomach, and so we can see, uh, and that's how we were trying to to measure it. But after all, we decided to use the ear, the part of the ear, uh, that was much easier to uh, get data from the ear. Uh, so, doing the analysis on the spectra over two years, um, you can see that the red part is the diseased uh, mouse, and the blue one is the one without the disease. So, after the mouse was injected, uh, the disease, for 150 years, um, the mouse was constantly fighting with the other mouse. So for 150 days, it was quite energetically fighting with the others. But then after 150 years, you can actually see that it's diseased and it will use, lose all its power. So, uh, so it's quite interesting. So, so in the beginning, they are uh, in the same, they, they kind of do act and look the same, but then you can see a difference. But then there's one point where they reach that same area again. Um, but then, of course, the disease is the disease. It has a disease. So it, it's, of course, not the same as the ones without the disease. So, by giving the water energy, you change the water, and by observing the change, that becomes 
you need to evaluate, to get, get all the information, and that all collectively becomes the data that we need. I mean, just by observing, you don't get the data right away. It needs to be observed and, and analyzed. And then going back to what I was talking about earlier, the omics um, over there are so many omics as it's over 60 um, uh, genomics proteomics uh, uh, metabolomics so many omics uh, they're all individual parts of individual omics but when they go into the water all the functions of the different omics gets together. They actually um, they give each other reaction, and in water they come together. So the multivariate spectral analysis directly does affect and the water. And then, of course, uh, just getting the data, it doesn't really mean anything if you don't move forward from then again. So it is always important that we move forward. Yeah. So as I said, yeah, water is mirror. What we see in the water is not just a reflection. Actually, it expands in the water. So, the fact, fractality is something that I will talk about. So, in the microscopic world and the macroscopic world, actually the same things occur. It's not one or the other. You can see similarities there. In something very small, there's something very big. So in something very little, you can see big changes. And I think that is something amazing and it can be applied to so many things. And yeah, we have been talking about Womax, water absorbent. So, so I will talk about the band now. Um, I wrote a paper about it. Um, so band is, or just letters. Combination of, so words are letters and spectral band uh, gave us information. So this is a table I published earlier. And when concentration globally changes, this number is activated. Or the protein in milk. So when the cow is healthy, this bond will change. This is how to look at this table. And each band has its own meaning. And a combination of bands are letters and words, and then we can create a program. Actually, I like this chart. I think this is very interesting. And red one is spectrum of water, and blue one is a spectrum of vapor. And when we closely look at the spectrum of vapor around here, so we can see, we can uh, know the uh, vapor in water. This rice, uh, ice spectrum is around here. This is water, but water contains three elements, for example. Thank you very much. Water contains, although we cannot see, but the water contains steam and ice. Therefore, 
When we look at acroglum, steam is around here, and this is about water, and there are many overlay overlap. And when we overlay ice around here, so acrogram represents a function of vapor as well. And I enjoyed this data. I, I, I played with this data in December. <coughs> Ako Photomics Labo started its operation. Congratulations. And you can see a poster outside this hall. And one of the researchers at the Ako Photomics Laboratory said 432 hertz of water, while that water is flowing. And the researcher tried to get spectrum and same for 440 hertz. Then the result, what is interesting is that 440 hertz water, we can create very beautiful acroglam. And sound cause changes, but 432, on the other hand, it's very difficult to pre make a prediction. Maybe we need more time to predict. Characteristics of 432 hertz is that A, B, C, D, E, F, a distance among distance between each element is not the same. So this is the distance of Pythagoras. Out of 12 bands, the uh, so we, we can see very really similar hardness and sound or color. Like sound and color, why we can see color or what, can, what we can hear sound and how to create the beautiful music and how to create a, a good sound. Nobody knows the effect of sounds. And like this, water changes its structure. So maybe in the near future, we can combine all the data of sounds and colors and so on, and all the colors and all the uh, sound, sounds and all the water structures are related in the same way. I think this is one of my, pro uh, pro one of my projects going forward. We, we have to combine all the information. And here comes Aquaphotomics. Going forward, I'd like to talk about papers we published so far. For the past few years, what kind of application have been found? The review of papers. So this is from uh, the paper titled Agrophotomics from Innovative Knowledge to Integrative Platform in Science and Technology. So this is not about chemistry, but agrophotomics is an integrated platform, contains many omics. And in the future, the international conference of this kind will be held more and more. In the past and even now, diagnosis is one of the important applications. So in our eye, like a photo mix, will contribute to precise diagnosis going forward. And our NIR can observe a lot, but in some cases, water uh, affects negatively in uh, NIR. However, agrophotomics uses use uh, water if necessary. We will focus on changes in water. In the morning session, 
Water shows different response to temperatures. Temperature, so water is temperature sensitive. However, and different each different water has shows different responses. So the increase of temperature will tell us what kind of the water it will be. And there are papers like DNA or fibrillation. And acrogram shows, uh, tell us information in detail. And acrogram tell us about hydrogen bonds and also the reason of fibrillation. And uh, oxidate the stress on the virus, in particular soybean virus, stress. And there are papers about the stress. And recently, joint research with Bulgaria is a covers uh, the eternal plant. Uh, there is a very rare plant grown at the top of the mountain in Bulgaria. And even so, so resurrection plant, the researchers continue to monitor the resurrection plant by, uh, through spectrum and uh, the plant respond so beautifully. And so um, a water not working or so without water plant cannot survive in many cases so however some some plants can survive without water and Professor Kondo at Kobe University conducted joint research about metabolomics and aquaphotomics. They integrate these two fields to know about the fact that NIR can produ represent, uh, produce 75% of data, but the remaining data cannot be created. So metabolomics cannot predict functionality. For example, this kind of bacteria is grown and uh, we like to predict at what timing, what, at what timing that metabolic uh, will be diseased. But, so Mr. Nakagawa is doing research, but the uh, photomics can predict the change due to the changes in water. But during the preparation of sample, there must be there must have been changes in water. So the uh, other people. Other students are also doing their research with about this. The quality of drinking water. So we can learn about the quality of uh, drinking water from the aquagram, the weather which contains a lot of iron, uh, iron components and so on. And with this data, uh, so I believe that we can fully utilize this kind of data. And recently, soil pollution or soil contamination. Soil contamination. So uh, once we pour water in uh, on soil, 
we can know about the condition of soil. Rather than long-lasting research, we can instantly know what kind of metal is included in the soil due to the from the response of water. And same for contaminant in water, such as PPB or PPP level. The NRI is in the field of biology. So by enlarging water content like PCR, by enlarging water structure, we can get a lot of information. So this is about an experiment I, I, I talked, I touched upon. Plant. So at first, this is very beautiful. This is without contamination. And this is one of the type or other types of con contamination. And each contamination or each pollutant shows different spectrum. And the changes are similar to each other. When a stress is applied, fully water molecule is uh, disappearing and but are connected with each other. So these uh, water molecules stop, stop to work, just try to save energy. I like to do a demonstration for your reference and uh, talking about milk. So far, I have covered aqua gram. So now you can create aqua gram and you can you now understand what aqua gram is and then how to use it. I like to talk about. That was a large scale project at a cow house, cow shed. I took spectrum every morning to find any diseases or the signs of delivery or signs of mastitis or uh, collect dead cells and the effect, effect or impact of dead cells. And this is a gram of cows from the most beautiful milk. Around this part is like a steam a walk, or walking, a walking milk water and trap water is the free water, free water molecule that can move between trap water. And then also the vapor like water is here and also protonated water is here. And here is a protein and dimer and hydronium. 1438, this is about the proton of the water molecule. So small and large protonated water molecule clusters are there. So this is a healthy uh, water, the water from a healthy cow, but dead cells to increase in sick cow. Aquaglam. Pale color uh, shows the more cells because more free water molecules. And this is a different of the uh, intensity of hydrogen bonds. And like this, the, the, there is a changes in the middle, it's a balanced one. And when it expands, the shapes will be changed. Protonated one has decreased. Protonated cluster has decreased. 
So these dynamic changes, uh, for example, this part has been changed for the sick cows, protonated clusters has gone, and the vapor like water has gone. And small clusters remaining. In the end, when the lipid is low, the water is like this, water in milk. When the lipid is high, the different picture. So you can track water changes. That is how you can use the aquagram. That is just an example. So now I am in the final stage of my presentation. New frontiers, what we should pay attention in the future, what we could do in the future. Now we have a collaboration with Bulgarian group about the new spectrometer, my spectrometer. Because light affects water, if that is the case, probably the light affects the human body, or animal body, a plant body. So that was our question, and we started it last year. And, and here is the spectrometer. Uh, there are a lot of papers of near infrared and terahertz, but terahertz light causes impact on water. NIR, the shorter wavelength is closer to the visible light. So it's just uh, no, vibrate water. But longer wavelength in NIR. I don't have an answer yet, but NIR is a beautiful domain and it exists for living system, but we don't know why it, it exists. So there are unanswered questions. So these are the people who learned under me, these two people. So they graduated electronic engineering and developed, developing spectrometers. And also the people in Unosato. At Hotomix Labo is there, and also we have Bulgarian people. We have collaborative research. And this is the new Aqua Photomix Labo in Unosato and their staff. There are many things that we can look forward. Everything is new here. Uh, under the vacuum pressure, the vegetables and fruits are used to extract water and a new product of water is created. So it is to utilize the functionality of water in cells. And that is something ongoing. So I would like to extend my gratitude. So starting with gratitude and ending with gratitude. This is my family. Another family of myself. So this uh, it's a get together before the new year. In Bulgaria, I have relatives and friends. This gathering took place in my hometown. So I became an honorary citizen there. And also, 
This is another photo. Koto Shu and myself, Koto Oshu is a sumo wrestler, and together with him, I took a photo, and also I have a family in Kobe. On the 1st of March, with red and white, the Japanese are red and white color, the red is love and white is health. And so we exchange present uh, with ourselves. But now we are having this international conference so under these difficult situations, uh, all of people in laboratory work hard, and also people in UNOSATO as well, and also sponsor. I extend my sincere gratitude to everyone who have made this possible, and we have a great program. And thank you very much for everyone's effort. Thank you very much. The sponsor, thank you very much for your support. Taking this opportunity, I would like to say that we want to make effort. The journey will continue. These red letters, imagination, consciousness, there are new words. And the biohybridization, this is a new word I don't like, but the, anyway, there are uncharted course. We have the light and the water. If we have these two, we can move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. This is a fourth conference, international conference of Aka Photomics, and this is a keynote lecture of this conference, and also the her commemorative lecture and also open lecture. In this area, she has discovered this disciplinary of aqua photonics, and she explained our history quite uh, easy to understand the way. And this area is expanding more and more. I think that's what we think right now. Hi, Romiana. This is uh, Christian from Innsbruck. I think it was uh, during an uh, conference in Verona when I had the big pleasure to meet you for the first time and it was in South Korea in Gyeongju when I had the huge pleasure to hear first time about the Cafetomics. And now we've been collaborating over more than 20 years uh, together and I really see that you are one of the most leading NIR spectroscopists all over the world. You are one of the only few who is looking behind the curtain. And from personal point of view, I had a huge pleasure to meet you as a real friend and I'm really always positively influenced by your very optimistic uh, way of life. So please let us stay in Dutch, let us collaborate and you are always very warmly welcome to visit us in Innsbruck. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Professor Tenkawa. Congratulations. <clears throat> After retirement, you will have more time to do the things you like to do. We you have a colorful and happy life in the future. Now, let's share this wonderful time we spent together. Should all the quintess be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all the quintess be forgot and days of all inside? i
Hello, Rurugnana. You know that I've been one of your very early supporters in introducing aquaphotomic concepts into the NIR community. Yes. In this occasion, I want to join the same group of people in addressing to you my sincere appreciation for all the activities you carried out, both professional and human. Enjoy the different lifestyle that you can face now. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hi, Romiana. I'm here, of course, to wish you the best for your future. I met you the first time in 1997, so 24 years ago. It's, it is very strange for me to think about your retirement, but what else? So, remember that this is the only drink you need, and then come by, Romiana, and good luck for your future. A kiss from Italy. Hi, Yana. We have met each other since 1999 when the International NIS Spectroscopy Conference was held in Verona. I'm very grateful to have met you and I have uh, the occasion to speak with you not only about uh, um, NIS Spectroscopy or about uh, photonics, but also about uh, the life day, about our, our passion, our hobbies. I want to wish you all the best for the new chapter of your life and as we say in Italia, buona vita. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Chenkova Sensei, Omedetou gozaimasu. Congratulations on your retirement. Uh, also, congratulations on becoming distinguished professor of Kobe University. Uh, I'm so pleased to know that you can continue uh, continue working on aqua photonics in Kobe University. Uh, I truly appreciate you for long-term friendship, exchange, and collaborations. I have no words to thank you very much for your kindness. So uh, I do hope we can continue our cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello, Tenkova Sensei. This is Masaru Yasui, Professor of Pharmacology at Keio University School of Medicine. Congratulations to Professor Tenkova for retiring Kobe University. It's really respectful to have been a professor in a foreign country for such a long time. I'd like to pay tribute to the fact that you have established a new world of photomics and that you have been leading this field. I'd also like to express my sincere gratitude for raising many students. I'm sure that they will further expand aquaphotomics research as your successors. I pray that you will continue to play an active role globally as a leader of aquaphotomics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Professor Sankova, congratulations. Um, I don't really know what to say except thank you and that I hope you have a healthy, joyful, wonderful time after you leave Kobe University. And you, I hope also that you'll take a very well-deserved rest. <coughs> Professor Chenkova, thank you very much for this long time research. Um, I was hoping to be there actually in person. I'm sorry that I have to talk to you in this kind of way. 
Um, um, a lot of the times <laughs> you gave me good advice and uh, sorry for not doing my homework all the time, but yes, you let me well. Um, I heard that you will keep on doing your lectures, so I look forward to hearing your lectures again. So, March, you will retire, uh, but please take care of your health. Uh, don't drink too much. And in a broad view, um, I wish you all the success. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi, uh, Rumiana. Uh, so, is it really true that you're retiring? I, uh, how, how could that be? I, I know in, in Japan, retirement usually occurs uh, at a young age. Um, and uh, are, are you really 50 now? Uh, well, I, I, I'm not sure. But anyway, I, I wish you the best in um, the beginning of the next phase of your life. Uh, it, I must say it's always been a, um, a great pleasure to um, interact with you. Uh, I particularly enjoyed, I mean, your sensitivity, your understanding, and your science, uh, your deep uh, immersion into um, infrared spectroscopy, which, you know, everybody, uh, everybody really appreciates. So um, I give you uh, a great big hugs and um, I wish you the best in, in your celebration and in, in whatever, whatever comes next. Good to be a, a part of this celebration. Um, take care. Much love. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, good morning, Professor Zenkova. Here we are today before the conference. So, um, I look like rubbish. I just came and parked my vehicle, as you can see there in the corner. But um, I've learned many things with you, and one of the things is. For example, just put red lipstick and you would look much, much nicer when you're that styled. So, uh, on the occasion of your fake retirement, I want to congratulate you on, the, um, on this very long and really incredible career. And uh, I'm very grateful that I met you because you enriched my life in really ways I never could have imagined. I never knew what I was capable of of understanding, of doing, I really did not know how much strength I have uh, and uh, basically that I can endure everything, do everything I want to do, that the ways uh, to something you want open when you just <laughs> relax and uh, let the circumstances just come to you. So, uh, those are very, very vi uh, valuable, uh, not just lessons for science, but for life. And I'm very, very grateful to you for uh, providing that to me. Although maybe that was not intentional. <laughs> uh, it was a really nice uh, opportunity so far to uh, work on Aphrodamics with you. And I'm really looking forward to a new chapter uh, when, uh, you know, things I hope will be more relaxed because um, you don't have to teach anymore. Ah, one more thing. I wanted to say uh, one more very remarkable thing. Um, what I saw about you is that you are um, capable of somehow <laughs> magnetically attracting the best the most capable people I ever met. And uh, all these people contributed uh, to my life in really beautiful ways. For, for example, from 
uh, a person I met a long time ago in your lab, if I go and I've learned how to write papers from Zoltan Kovac, who, who was uh, in your lab as one of the postdocs. I've learned how to do analysis. Oh, he's great uh, at that. You have the best ever secretary in the world, Sekusan. I don't know how we're yes. going to <laughs> do um, further without you. And you have really the most amazing uh, technician, although he's everything, not just the technician, Lawrence. Uh, so, I really, really want to, uh, to thank you for not just being you, for not just, um, you know, helping me personally, but making us all together and bringing all sorts of uh, things into reality. That's a beautiful thing to do, being creative. I wish you all the success and luck and best of health and joy in the rest of your journey. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. それでは引き続きまして、あの千古場先生に水の大切さを最初にお伝えしたと言われる。岩本睦夫先生からですね、えー、花束の贈呈がありますので、よろしくお願いいたします。Flowers will be given from Mr. Iwamoto to Chenkova. 先生、プロフェッサー Chenkova、Thank you very much for teaching us the importance of water. Students of Professor Senkova, thank you very much, <laughs> Professor Senkova. And of course, there are a lot of students who are not able to be here with us, but our feelings of gratitude is all here. Thank you very much. 20 years at Kobe University. Thank you very much. Um, in the field of research, of course, you have supported me throughout my studies. Uh, but, of course, it's not just in the research room. Um, I've learned so many things about life from you. Uh, one thing is be aggressive and positive. You have taught me that. And the other thing is is the relationship with people, how you interact with people, how the people are all connected. Uh, so I believe that moving forward in a positive way, it's not, it's like water and light. People are water and life and light, and we're all connected and help each other and affect each other. So um, I heard that you are still going to continue your research, uh, but please live your life the way you live. Um, it's really a great way of living. Thank you so very much. I am speechless. Thank you so much. I, that's all I can say. Thank you. 
I, I'm, oh, no. my, I'm very Can't moved you. and thankful. I love you, Jonas. That's all. Arigato. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>